Method 1. Le baby carton. Firstly, add a grid object. Then, to see what we're doing, turn on wireframe in the overlays menu and turn the subdivisions up to 52. Rotate it in edit mode on the x-axis. Select the top edges. Add those selected vertices to a new vertex group. So now we need an object to control the scrunching. I'm going to use a cube and in edit mode scale it on the ZY plane. In object mode move it up. Then I'm going to select the grid, add a constraint. The constraint's going to be a copy scale constraint. I'm only going to select the X axis and I drop that cube from earlier. Then I'm going to add a cloth physics and I'm going to select that vertex group as a pin and select self collisions and then I'm going to press play and scale that cube and as you can see we get a beautiful curtain. Now just wait for that to settle and once it's settled just press pause and apply the cloth modifier and then put it in the bank. That's one curtain in the bank. Method de drapes for babies. Add a grid like before and select the side edges as well as the top edges. Add all of those to a new vertex group. Now as a controller I'm going to use a plane and I'm going to delete two of the edges, leaving two edges remaining. I'm going to separate one of those edges using P. Select both those objects and go origin to geometry. Now we're going to add constraints like before. Add a copy scale constraint for the x-axis and I drop that edge. Add another copy scale constraint for the z-axis and I drop the other edge. And now we go to the physics tab and we're going to add cloth physics and we're going to go to the first frame and enable self collisions and pin that vertex group. Press play and start scaling and realize I've made a mistake because I chose the Y axis instead of the Z axis, but we can fix that and press play and scale that bad boy until we have drapes. Lovely, lovely drapes. Yeah, anyway, once you've scaled everything to your liking and you have lovely drapes, just apply the cloth modifier and then you can do whatever you want with them. There are some drawbacks to the method, so I'm going to show you another method that's a little bit more realistic. Ah, the curtain hooks. It's my favorite. Add a grid like before and rotate it. Then select every third vertex on the top edge and add those to a vertex group. Then press Ctrl H to hook those vertices. That'll create a new object. Then add cloth physics with internal collisions and a pinned vertex group. Then press play and scale the hook object. Go back to the starting point with undo. Select these four corner vertices and add them to the existing vertex group and hook them. Go to the modifiers tab and make sure that the modifiers are in this order with cloth at the bottom. Go to object mode and go to the first frame and press play and scale that top empty and then you can move the bottom empty moving the curtain as you do so rotate it as you go and move it around and up and rotate it again and move it back and you end up with this curtain that's being pulled at the corner wait for that to settle press pause and apply the cloth modifier go into sculpting mode we're going to do some sculpting just expand the brush menu and select the cloth brush. Uh, go into the tool menu and select grab and just wiggle it all around. No, I'm kidding, that does nothing. Undo that, go into fall off and set the interpolation to linear and set a nice big brush size and you can adjust the angle of the cloth if necessary. Now I will show you how to use the cloth filter brush. Select the mask brush, turn the size down and the strength up. Mask out the edges of the cloth, the top edge and the pulled edge. Now select the cloth filter brush and just click and drag to the right to make the gravity go down or to the left to make it go up. 
it takes a bit of finessing and you will get collisions. So to correct that, go into edit mode and turn proportional editing on with connected off and just adjust it until you get something that you're happy with. You can adjust it in sculpting mode or edit mode, that's fine. Put it in the bank. Method 4. Physical bunching. To bunch the curtain at the top and the bottom, you could use the previous method of selecting vertices and adding them to a vertex group, pinning them and hooking them and scaling them, and that will give you a result that looks okay, but the problem with it is that it won't be physically realistic, because in reality the sides of the curtain would slide up as it bunches. So in order to do this properly, I'm going to remove those bottom vertices from the vertex group and delete this hook and remove the hook modifier from the stack because I'm not using it and I'm going to add a torus and this torus is going to be used to bunch the curtain so I'm just moving it into place scaling it up and now I'm going to add a collision physics to it. These collision physics on the torus will enable it to interact with the cloth while the animation is played so in order to get it to work I press play from frame one and I start scaling the torus down slowly, slowly as to not have the curtain penetrate through the torus. I pause the animation every now and again to create a sort of checkpoint to go back to with undo in case I mess up. It doesn't always work though, so this might take a few tries. I'm now just carefully moving the torus to the left to create a sort of drawn curtain effect and scaling it down until I get the desired size. If you're happy with that, you can delete the torus and apply the cloth modifier, but I decide that I actually am not happy with it and I want to make some bunching in the top, so I scale down the hook empty just to create a sort of bunched curtain effect, and then I delete the torus and apply the cloth modifier and put it in the bank. Method 5. You get the picture. For this final demonstration, I'm going to incorporate the previous two methods to create a corner piece. I'm going to start with a grid of 52 subdivisions. I'm going to select these two corner edges, invert the selection and delete edges. Then I'm going to select these edges and extrude them downwards and then subdivide it with loop cuts. Uh, just pump that up to a good number with the mouse wheel. Once I have sufficient loop cuts, I'm going to select every third vertex on the top edge using Control shift numpad plus and just keep pressing that until you've selected every third vertex. Then I'm going to add those vertices to a new vertex group and I'm going to hook it with Control h And once that's done, I'm going to move the 3D cursor to the corner and I'm going to add a torus to the scene and scale it up. Then I'm going to select the grid and add cloth physics and add the pin group and self collisions. Then to the torus I'm going to add collider physics and go to frame one, press play and start scaling the torus down. Just like before I'm scaling it slowly and carefully to not cause any collision issues. You can also scale the empty to create some bunching at the top and I'm just continuing to scale that cube down to my desired size, pausing to create checkpoints, and now I'm just moving it down until I have it in the desired position. Once you have it, you can delete the torus and apply the cloth modifier. For the second phase of this, I'm going to add hooks to the newly created bunch. So to begin with, I'm just going to go ahead and hook the above vertices again and delete the old hook and then I'm going to select the vertices at the bunch and just add those to the existing vertex group and then I'm going to hook those and now I'm going to select the cloth and add a cloth physics again and then enable the pin group and self collisions and this is going to allow me to move the bunch around while the animation is playing. I want to create a corner of a mosquito net that has been pulled up and tied during the day to keep it out of the way. 
so I'm just slowly and carefully moving that empty up and rotating it into place making sure that I have these nice curved sides. I'm also scaling it down to bunch it up even further and rotating the view to make sure that it looks good from all sides and just continuing to rotate it until it's almost vertical. Now it's looking a little bit messy so I'm going to enable smooth shading in the object menu and apply the cloth modifier and delete those hooks. Now to finish it off I'm going to sculpt it a bit so starting with the mask tool I'm just going to mask out the top edge and mask around the bunch and this is just going to make sure that the masked areas are not affected by other sculpting tools and select the cloth filter and just click and drag to the right and that's just going to apply a little bit of gravity to our model and then in edit mode with proportional editing turned on with connected turned off I'm just going to correct some of the collisions there and there you have it there's the final corner of a mosquito net now hopefully you can put all of these pieces together and create a full suite of whatever your heart desires. As a bonus, I just want to show you a little trick that you can do with the sculpting tools. So just select the mask and mask out the corners and then select the cloth filter and there you have a roof for your mosquito net. The amazing thing about the new cloth tools is you can quickly create a pillow. So I'm just going to add a cube and scale it down on the y-axis and create these subdivisions then go into sculpting select cloth filter select pressure and drag it to the right and there you have a pillow isn't that absolutely amazing it literally takes like 30 seconds the best way to get the pillow to look like it's resting on something is just to enable cloth physics on the pillow and turn the pressure up and on the collider turn the friction up so that the pillow doesn't slide around and then when you have the final model, you can add some details with the cloth sculpting brush, which I find to be a fantastic help. Of course, once you have all these elements, you can arrange them in your scene to your liking, if that's the kind of thing you like to do. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, congratulations if you made it this far. If you haven't already, please check out my other videos on the channel and consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon to support me. Thank you so much for the 500 subscribers. I know 500 isn't very much, but it's been a long time coming. I feel like I should have done this ages ago. In fact, I have uploaded quite a few videos, but I haven't really taken it very seriously until recently. So thank you so much for your support. I actually have three other YouTube channels that I've been posting videos on over the years, such as these Prestig animations that I made when I was just a little kid with my brother when I was about 12 or 13 years old, like this one where the guy's swimming around on the table. And uh, I have a lot of regret associated with it because I feel like if I had uploaded these videos when I was a kid or if I had presented them differently or just marketed myself, I probably, you know, could have made a go of it. But anyway, it's not too late and I'm really enjoying making videos now and I will make some in the future. Um, this is a little dancing guide that I made about five years ago when I was just learning Blender. And it's something that I really want to uh, try out again, you know, 3D rigging and facial animations and stuff like that. Um, I'll provide a link to that video. This is a, a game that I was working on uh, at about the same time as I made that animation and it revolves around breaking down buildings like that. And it might look kind of simple, but I'm quite proud of it. Um, those, the breaking, they're not rigid bodies, they sort of transform into rigid bodies. And this is another game that I was working on that was like a Minecraft clone. These got virtually no views because I didn't market myself very well um, but hopefully in the future I can continue to try to make games like this and you know share it all with you.
was actually supposed to be like a strategy version of Minecraft where you can see things from a bird's eye view, sort of like Dungeon Keeper. And it's a cool idea, I kind of want to uh, make something like that in the future. But I have loads of ideas for games. I lost uh, these games that I made as well as tons of other projects that I was working on, you know. Um, from viruses and uh, moving and things breaking and things getting stolen. Um, yeah, so it's been quite rough. I need to start over again, but that's fine. Uh, you might have noticed these paintings. These are all caricatures that I've done. I will make a tutorial on that in the future. And this is my Patreon where you can donate. And if you donate, I can do this full time. So please think about that. Uh, if you want some more videos from me, thanks again. Bye.